Hi, my name's Andy and welcome to the channel Andy's Tech. And on my never ending search for used PC parts, uh, I came across this the other day. Uh, I saw this on Facebook Marketplace uh, locally and uh, I snapped it up. Uh, I initially bought it for parts. Uh, it was listed as a Core 2 Quad uh, gaming PC and it cost me £40 here in the UK, which is about 50 US dollars, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong, I'm sure I am wrong. Uh, but when I got it home, I thought, do you know what, rather than just strip out the parts I brought it for, which we'll get to in a moment, why don't we just see what it can do? Uh, I did do a video on a Quad 2 Quad Q66, and I was quite impressed by what it could still do uh, performance-wise. So why don't we uh, get a little closer look into this. We're going to clean it down, make it look all nice, uh, maybe do some overclocking, uh, put some games on it, do some benchmarks, see what this old girl can do. So enjoy the video, folks. Now beneath this Goliath of a Zalman Z11 Plus uh, performance gaming case, I think they were kind of going for the look of the old Alienware systems uh, without kind of quite pulling it off. But it's an okay case. Uh, but inside is what really matters. Uh, the heart of this system, we've got a uh, Intel Q9300 uh, CPU uh, on a Gigabyte GA G3 M motherboard uh, with four gigabytes of ddr2 ram in dual channel and we've got a gtx 460 uh, in the system as well one gigabyte one gigabyte of gddr5 and a rather uh, suspect looking uh, evo labs 700 watt power supply uh, we'll get that on the tester uh, in a bit as well and, and give it a test i have also got a couple of nice little extras there's like a usb free uh, pci card added in here but what I really bought the system for initially was it had a two terabyte hard drive and a 256 gig Samsung Evo SSD. Uh, now, if I price them up for parts, it's about £20 for the SSD and £20 for the hard disk drive, uh, which I am going to use in another build after this. We've technically got the rest of the system for free. And uh, this is what I love about this part of like PC parts hunting. Um, you know, you never know what you're going to end up with at the end of it. And to be fair, if I put another old 500 gig hard drive in it, put Windows on it, I can probably get the £40 back I paid for it. So I've kind of got a whole PC for nothing really. But anyway, onwards and upwards folks, I'll put a list of the specs uh, on the side here now, uh, just so you can recap again of what we got in the system. Uh, cable management aside, uh, yeah, I don't know what they were thinking. Uh, let's get it outside, uh, get it all cleaned out and dusted out and then we can tidy up the case a bit, make it look all smart and brand new again, and then we can get some games on it, and then we can get some games on it, and then we can get some games on it, and then we can get some games on it. Brand new again, and then we can get some games on it.
brand new again. some games on it then we can get some games on it brand new again And there we have it folks. And after some Andy's tech loving, she's cleaned up brand new again. And I really like the way the system's turned out and it should make its new owner very happy uh, when we sell it on afterwards, or if I sell it on afterwards. Um, there are gonna be some hardware limitations with this system, uh, mainly the four gigabytes of RAM and the Core 2 Quad uh, might hold us back in some more uh, modern games. I say modern games, but we're not really gonna test many modern games um, due to these limitations. Uh, but let's jump into the desktop quick because I managed to get some overclocks on the CPU and the GPU. So with Cinebench R15 and CPU Z up, uh, we can see the Core 2 Quad. She's running at 3.1 gigahertz. Uh, I managed to increase the front side bus and the multiplier to 7.5 from 7. And we got a maximum stable. She would go a bit higher, but it wasn't very stable. So that's a nice little overclock on the CPU. And as you can see, we were getting 196 at stock. And this score has increased to 306 uh, with the overclock. And you can see we did manage to get 325. Um, but as I said, it wasn't stable uh, in games. Uh, and if we up, open up Mizzy Afterburner, um, again, we managed to get 8 15 on the core clock and at 1950 uh, on the memory clock uh, and we've increased the, the core voltage slightly as well so that should help as well just give us a little boost for frames uh, in the games uh, so without further ado it's probably kind of what you've been watching for uh, let's jump into some games and uh, first up we have Half-Life 2 which ran at 1080p with no problem uh, we're using pretty much the highest settings we can in the in-game menu everything whacked up to high and we were getting an average of about 130 FPS, 1% loads of 97. Uh, so if you've got an old system like this, uh, as is expected, Half-Life 2 is no problem. Uh, we could run this all day at these settings and have a very enjoyable experience. And next up we have CSGO and we'll get it out of the way quickly. Uh, it's still a very popular free online multiplayer title uh, and there's been a couple of new maps released as well recently, uh, which are good, brilliant little maps. Uh, but it's just broken at the moment CSGO. Now it used to be like the go-to game for sort of potato budget low-end systems and it was just absolutely struggling on this. Um, you know, the CPU was holding it back a lot and the RAM, um, but we were struggling to get a 30 FPS average uh, at 1080p and 720p didn't make any difference. Uh, so if you've got a kind of system like this or you're looking at this for benchmarks, uh, don't play CSGO. Uh, it's not an enjoyable experience. We can, couldn't hardly get any kills. I uh, pretty much got my, my ass handed to me in a bot match. Uh, so moving on to Minecraft and at 1080p again. Now Minecraft again is still a very popular title and it can pretty much play on any system. Uh, we were running with eight uh, chunks, render chunks, uh, with like the clouds turned off and the graphics set to, to low or uh, fast instead of fancy. And we also capped the game at 60p, 60 FPS as it was struggling to load in uh, at a higher FPS and a higher render distance. Uh, but again, if you've got a system like this, it's still very playable with Minecraft. Uh, you could play all day like this. And this is the Java version and not the Microsoft Store version. Uh, the Microsoft Store version is a bit more optimized and you might see better FPS on that. And another classic next, uh, Far Cry 3. Uh, this is a brilliant game and was recently uh, it was offered up as free 
uh, on the Ubisoft store. Uh, I'm not sure if it's still free, but if it is, go and get it. Um, and if you have already got it, then this game needs no introduction. It's a brilliant game. We were playing at 1080p medium settings. Uh, and again, we were seeing a plus 30 FPS average with an average FPS of about 50 and 1% lows of about 30. Uh, if you wanted a more close to 60 FPS uh, experience, you could drop the resolution down to 720p. Um, but I'm a budget gamer, so I class anything above 30 FPS as an average experience as playable. And I mean, certainly if you're playing on a last gen console, uh, you're going to see a 30 FPS experience anyway. Um, and a game like this, I can more than happily play at 30 FPS. So 50 FPS average is even better. And last up, a game that needs no introduction, GTA 5. Still a very popular game and a very good game, I must say. Uh, we had to drop the resolution here to 720p, uh, but we were still seeing uh, a plus 30 FPS average. We were averaging about 48 FPS uh, on the normal settings uh, with 1% loads of 32. Now, we couldn't run it at 1080p as there was issues with the textures loading in and stuff. This would be due to uh, the DDR2 and the four gigabytes of it. Uh, and the CPU was pretty much pegged at 9500% uh, and any higher texture rates or frame rates were just tanking out, um, tanking out the textures loading in and stuff. Uh, but you can certainly play at this and you could play at 1080p and cap the frame rate to 30 FPS. And like was previous mentioned in Far Cry, I'm quite happy to play at 30 FPS, uh, but this footage was shot in 720p uh, just to show the higher frame rate. And that brings us to the end of the video. Uh, now I had a lot of fun making this. Um, not only have I got the parts I wanted for another PC build, uh, it was also nice to see what, what this old system with these specs could do. Uh, and certainly the Q6600 uh, in whatever variant you, you choose or you have. Uh, still has some life to give you know there, there's still some games it can play very well and some games it can't play very well um, and also the the gtx 460 uh, again it's an old card uh, it doesn't have driver support and stuff like that these days uh, but depending on what what use case you put it into it's still a very capable gpu for for what it for what it can still do you know gta 5 uh, counter strike again with with a better cpu and system behind it um, but yeah, I, ho I hope you had some fun. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please leave a like or a comment down below. Let me know what you've liked about the video. If you've disliked the video, again, please leave a dislike. Let me know what you've disliked about the video and what I can improve on. Uh, I'm still learning with YouTube. Uh, please subscribe if you want to see more content like this uh, and if you want to see the channel grow. Uh, my name's Andy. Thank you for watching. Hopefully I'll see you in the next one. God bless and take care.